So in this lecture, we want to see how we, we can make a displacement distance graph for this system. Now, what is this system all about? This system consists of a spiral spring, and then there is a mass supported on the spring, and then I'm going to set it into oscillation by giving it maybe a displacement of about 10 centimeters up there, and then I release the system. And the system starts oscillating. Now, let's start from the beginning. So at that particular position, the mass is at rest. This is referred to as the equilibrium position. The distance is zero, the displacement is zero. We are going to take displacement downwards to be negative and displacement upwards to be positive. So I'm going to give it a positive displacement of 10 centimeters up, like that. So remember where we have started. We have started where the displacement is zero, the distance is zero. If I give it a displacement of 10 centimeters up and release it, first of all, before I release it, displacement 10, distance 10. When it comes back to its position of rest or where it started from, the displacement becomes zero, distance is 20 centimeters. And then it doesn't stop there because it's got momentum. So it overshoots that point, moves an equal distance downwards of 10 centimeters. So the total distance becomes 30 centimeters. The displacement becomes minus 10 centimeters because we said from there upwards positive displacement. From there downwards negative displacement. So over there, displacement of minus 10 centimeters, distance 10 centimeters. And then it comes back to the starting point where the displacement will be zero, but the distance will be 40 centimeters. If it continues and goes to the next position there, the distance will be 50 centimeters. Displacement 10 centimeters. So that is what we are going to have. So we are going to start from there, displace and release. And when you are given a mass spring system, the best way of displacing the system is by raising it and then you remove your hand. The oscillations are going to be so smooth. Many times we pull the spring downwards, but when we release, it starts wobbling. Reason being, we've not displaced it in the correct direction. But when we raise it and release, it can't make a mistake. It will always oscillate in that very straight line. So it will never run out of alignment. Now, this kind of motion is what I have in this graph here. You can see that in this graph, I've got a displacement distance graph. The distance continues to increase, but the displacement oscillates from minus 10, 0, positive 10, 0, minus 10, 0, positive 10, and so forth. So it oscillates between minus 10 and positive 10, 0 being the equilibrium position. Now there are two points that I'd like you to note. We could start this oscillation from this point here. We could start this oscillation from equilibrium position in that particular position there. And then displace it downwards, which means we give it a negative displacement. By the way, over here, I've just labeled downwards to be negative, upwards to be positive. You could label it the opposite way. You could say, let upwards be positive. I mean, let upwards be negative and downwards be positive. So it is really up to the way you want to define it. I've defined it that way because I can see, according to my simulation here, the next moment its movement will be minus 10. So it's going to start from here 
and move down and then come back to zero, move up and so forth. So that is how this motion is all about. At the same time, let me go to the previous, yeah, that is another kind of motion that we could have. I could have a situation where I've given it minus 10 displacement, minus 10 centimeters as the displacement, and then release it from there. That is the kind of motion that I have. Notice that the previous one, which is that one, I'm starting from the origin. Distance is zero, displacement is zero. But this other one here, that one there, I'm starting from distance zero, but displacement minus 10. So that is a cosine curve. And in fact, it is a negative cosine curve. The other one is, of course, of course, there is a mistake here. This ought to be minus 10 because the displacement is either positive 10 or minus 10. I forgot to change this one. So this one is minus 10 centimeters, while this one is positive 10 centimeters. I was saying this one is a cosine curve, while the other one, let me see whether I can get the other one. That one is a sine curve, but minus sine curve. And that is how I can get a displacement distance graph. The physical quantity which I want you to be careful about here is this. Let's start from this position. We move minus 10, 0, positive 10, 0. The mass has made a complete oscillation. How much is the distance that, how much is the distance covered by that mass when it makes one complete oscillation? 10 centimeters, 20, 30, 40. You see, I can get that distance that is covered by this mass in one oscillation. And you will obviously remember that the distance covered by the wave, when the wave makes one complete oscillation, is referred to as the wavelength. Can we be able to determine it from this graph? Of, of course we can. And you can see that from this equilibrium position back to the same equilibrium position where the mass is ready to repeat the exact kind of motion is wavelength and it is 40 centimeters. Notice that if you know the displacement, you can easily get the wavelength. But this one only happens when we are looking at displacement distance graph. And over here, in my graph over there, I've used the same scale for y-axis and x-axis. I could use different scales, but the concept still remains that the distance covered by the wave, when the wave makes one complete oscillation, is equal to the wavelength. So if you know that, you should know this. And that is how you plot a simple displacement distance graph for any oscillating system. I've just used a mass spring system. You could do the same for a simple pendulum or any other system which is oscillating. What you have just seen is a sample of a number of lectures that I've put together in what I would refer to as a course. For more information, just click on the link in the video description and it will take you to the page where I have about 10 or so more lectures which are free before you can make a decision as to whether the course is right for you or not.